Hello everyone, we are starting the, the new week and in this case we are in week number three. So it's really, really amazing and that we are almost at the end. Um, we are going to have after this session, three more sessions to complete week number three and then we are going to have just one more a week, that is the week number four, to complete the, um, the course. So you have just a little bit more time to end this course. So time is flying really, really fast. It's happening really, really fast. So um, we are going to begin with this session because you know that we have just one hour and it's and in some cases, it's a very, very short time. Um, but you are almost, almost at the end of this course. That's very, very good. Because you are continuing with your process and you are learning a lot of things. So we are going to see the document in which we have the information related to the course. Um, Remember that you have access to the Google or Google documents in which I have the whole information about this course. And you have a lot of information there. You have the examples, the explanations, and all of those things. And if you have the link, and something that I don't like to do is to erase all the information that I have about the courses or the information that I share with you. So in that case, you don't need to be very worried because uh, you are going to find the information there even if the course is uh, end. So in that case, you will have the information there for a long time. Um, no voy a borrar la información después del, del curso porque eh, sé que muchos de ustedes pueden volver a entrar a eh, ver la información que se encuentra ahí. Así que por esa parte no tienen que preocuparse porque yo siempre voy a mantener la información ahí por un largo periodo de tiempo. Así que ustedes pueden seguir visitando el enlace del eh, documento. Eh, para eh, obtener más información acerca de los temas que hemos tocado. O si necesitan algunos ejemplos, ustedes los van a encontrar ahí en el enlace del documento. So in that case, um, you will have the whole information in uh, that uh, document for a long time in um, the Google Doc. So, uh, we are going to begin, and you know that I like to share a phrase with you at the beginning of the week. So I have a sentence for you. So let me share the screen and I will read the sentence for you. So we have here this sentence and it says like this. And it says life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. It's kind of hard to um, understand this part because uh, we may think that life is very, very um, difficult, but it says that a life is very simple. We as humans, uh, people like to make it complicated. So we need to change that idea um, about that life is kind of hard because we can make the best of it. In that case, we have a lot of dreams. We have a lot of uh, projects. And we need to enjoy the process. In some cases, we are going to find some, um, how can we say it? Um, we can find some troubles and some things like that, uh, but it is worth it. So in that case, we need to follow uh, our dreams and working very hard to find the end of the process. And remember that I have other sentences in which it says that um, the success is not in the end of the process. It is on the way that we are taking. So enjoy the process and 
make the best of your life, make it worthy. So, in the last uh, session, we were talking about the relative clauses, or in this case, the um, it was the relative clauses. It is not like just the, the, the clauses that we are going to use. So in this case, we have three more things that we are going to learn about the, uh, the relative clauses. The last thing that we were learning about this topic was the restrictive relative clauses. So now we are going to see the non-restrictive relative clauses, also reduction related relative clauses, and then we are going to see the subject verb agreement in relative clauses, and that is going to be the end of the topic. Then we are going to have a vocabulary. In this case, uh, this is a two part vocabulary uh, because we are going to have two separate things about this information. I think this, uh, this like to, to do this kind of thing sometimes because it's not any any problem with the connection it is not going to rain so i think my computer likes to do this kind of thing sometimes so i was saying that we are going to have two part vocabulary because um the topic is vocabulary for describing feelings and gestures Vamos a tener un vocabulario que he dividido en dos partes porque la primera la vamos a hacer eh, en vocabulario para describir sentimientos y el siguiente o la siguiente parte del vocabulario es para hablar de gestos, gestures, eh, eh, no love the things, position and no love the things. Así que el vocabulario es en dos partes, uno de sentimientos, uno de gestos, posturas, posiciones. So we are going to end with the part of the uh, relative clause, and then we are going to have a vocabulary. So we are going to construct. I'm so sorry for that. So we are going to begin. It means to stop talking and begin teaching. So we are going to continue with the part of the clauses. So this is the last part that we were learning. That is the restrictive relative clauses. That it says that the restrictive relative clauses give information that define the noun information that's necessary for complete identification of the noun. Use that or which for non-human nouns and use that or who for human nouns. Don't use commas. En ese tipo de cláusulas decíamos que eh, damos información que define el, la información del nombre que es necesaria para completar la identificación ¿verdad? de cuál es el nombre que estamos utilizando. Y que usamos that or which para los nombres que no sean humanos. En este caso, we can eh, use animals or things. Y que íbamos a usar that or who for human nouns. Eso es para nombres de humanos, in this case, person. And in that case, we are not going to use commas. So now we are going to see the other part, uh, in this case, is the non, non restrictive clauses. That is the other part of this um, a relative clause. So we are going to see non restrictive relative clauses. And it says this type of relative uh, clauses merely provides extra information. The information may be quite interesting and important to the larger conversation but it is not essential for precise identification of the noun. That cannot be used as a relative pronoun in a non-restrictive relative clause. 
commas are always used at the beginning and end of this type of relative clauses. So in this case, we have this information and it's saying that this kind of uh, relative clauses is just to give more information. That is the use that we are going to have for this uh, kind of relative clauses. And also this information needs to be quite interesting and important. It is it's like uh, something that we need to know about the noun. In this case, it's not like we need to use this information to know what is the noun. In this case, it's related to the noun. And it says that uh, we cannot use that in this relative clause. Así que tenemos que este tipo de eh, cláusula solo se utiliza para dar información. Ese es el uso que le vamos a dar. Y que eh, ten, tiene que ser información importante o tiene que ser información eh, interesante sobre el nombre. Aquí no vamos a identificar el nombre, sino que vamos a dar más información acerca del nombre. Y das no vamos a poder utilizarlo en este caso. So we are going to write the specification. So I will mark the most important part of this information because we have um, some phrases that we need to, to keep in mind when we are using this kind of relative clauses. So the first time, uh, I mean, the first thing that, that, that we are going to use for this uh, clause is this one, is provide extra information. That is the, um, the most important information that I'm going to mark in this moment about this uh, clause provides extra information. The information may be quite interesting and important to, to the larger conversation. So in that case, we are mark this one in which is saying that uh, we need to have interesting information or important information uh, that can not be used as a relative pronoun in no restrictive relative clause. This one is also one of the most important things that we need to keep in mind. And this one, commas are always used at the beginning at the end of these type of clauses. 
So, estamos marcando las más importantes o básicamente es, eh, todo es importante, pero lo más, más importante para reducirlo lo más que podamos. Provee extra información. Tiene que ser información interesante, importante para una conversación larga y no solamente para identificar el nombre. That no lo vamos a utilizar eh, como un pronombre relativo en este tipo de cláusulas. Y las comas siempre, in that case, it's like eh, a rule or always, siempre van a ser usadas al inicio y al final de este tipo de relative clauses. And it says an unexpected relative clause can modify a single noun, a noun phrase, or an entire preposition. So in that case, this kind of clause can modify a single noun, a noun phrase, or an entire preposition. And we have an example. In that case, I'm going to change it down. I will use this one. So let me move a little bit here. So we have the example and it says, my mother is thinking of opening a restaurant. My mother is an excellent cook. So it says, my mother is already a clearly defined noun. That is, we know that my mother is a noun. So the second sentence becomes a non-restrictive relative clause set up by commas on both sides. No le hemos puesto las comas porque estamos hablando de que my mother is the noun. Y ya sabemos que obviamente nos estamos refiriendo a ese nombre en la segunda oración. So, it says, my mother, we are going to change a little bit that situation. My mother, comma, who is an excellent cook, comma, is thinking, of opening a restaurant. So in that case, we are changing that uh, sentence and we are using commas to separate um, the ideas and also we have the uh, pronouns that we have in the list that we used in the past session. Ya teníamos nosotros, ¿verdad? Los pronombres que podíamos utilizar. We are going to move to the beginning of this topic. Vamos a movernos al principio. Just to see the, this one. Esto. We have these pronouns that we are going to use to create this kind of sentence. So we have who, who, and who, that, which, That are the uh, pronouns that we can use to help us with the sentences. So in that case, when we are saying this uh, example, it says, my mother, who is an excellent cook, in place of she. In ese caso, cuando decimos mi madre, quien es una excelente cocinera, 
No vamos a decir my mother, she is an excellent cook. En este caso vamos a utilizar los pronombres que ya tenemos allá para crear estas cláusulas. My mother who, who is an excellent cook is thinking of opening a restaurant. So, then we have another one. Then we have here, I'm planning to grow roses. I'm planning to grow roses. I find roses quite beautiful. In this case, we have this one, roses, two times, roses and roses. And for that sentence, we are going to use another uh, pronoun uh, that we have on the table at the beginning of this topic. And we are going to say, I am planning I'm planning to grow a roses, comma, which I find quite beautiful. So in that case, we change a little bit the sentence to create a new one. So let's see. Then we have the other one because we have three and we have just two more to end this, um, this topic. And then we are going to use the, um, the vocabulary. So let's see, we are going to see the other one that we have for this topic that is the Dustin and relative relative classes. So here it says, some types of relative clauses can be reduced. The relative pronoun and maybe other words can be removed. You might reduce the clause to make your writing more concise or to add sentence variety. We will use the examples to demonstrate how to reduce both restrictive and no restrictive clauses. In este, in este caso dice que podemos reducir nuestras oraciones cuando estamos escribiendo para hacer nuestra escritura más concisa o para agregarle variedad. Dice que hay cosas que le podemos quitar a nuestras oraciones, pero ya vamos a ver cómo se puede hacer. But first, we need the generalization or the information about this kind of clauses. And it says sometimes can be reduced. This one is very important because here we have the relative pronoun and maybe other words can be removed. Podemos quitar el pronombre relativo en este caso o podemos quitarle algunas otras palabras 
para reducir. So let's see, we're going to have just this one. So in this case, if you can see, we have writing. In writing, so it's a more common or a, it's very to use this time of relative clauses when you are writing, not when you are a, a speaking. So in that case, it's for writing because a, it adds like a variety and something a different to the things that you are writing. So we are going to see um, the the example. But give me a second. So in that case, we have like, we are going to see the examples and we are going to um, take in some elements away to make this sign of um, relative clause. Restrictive relative clauses can be reduced in two ways. We have two ways to reduce. Vamos a hacerlo de dos formas. Tenemos dos maneras en las que vamos a reducir nuestras oraciones. Así que vamos a ver los ejemplos de cómo vamos a hacer este tipo de cláusulas. First, we have subject. Subject pronoun can be delete, delete if ing is added to the verb. En el primero dice que vamos a eliminar el subject pronoun si tenemos el ing, si al verbo se le agrega ing. Let's see the examples. Here we have, I'll write the paintings that hang in the SASB North Lobby. I like the paintings. That hung in the SASB North Lobby. Then we have the other one. I like the painting This part is the same, but we are going to take that. Vamos a quitar el that de esta segunda oración. I like the paintings hanging and we're going to change. Hanging in the SISB North Lobby. Es casi lo mismo de larga, ¿verdad? So in that case, it's just taking some elements away. I like the painting hanging. In that case, we add ing to hang. 
And in the first one, we have that hang in the, that is kind of different. And in the second part, it says, object pronouns can be deleted. Vamos a eliminar los object pronouns in this second type of a reducing a sentence. I like the bike that my father gave me. And I like the bike my father gave me. In that case, we are just um, changing or deleting that for, of the sentence. Solo vamos a eliminar el that de la oración. And in that case, it's very uh, common that when we are writing or talking, we use that, 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 and that so many times. So in that case, and we can delete that part because um, we are using a lot. And it's going to sound kind of heavy if we use that, uh, that kind of, of word. Okay. Then we have the last part for this topic. We are almost done with this part. Then we are going to see the, the, um, the vocabulary. Subject, verb, agreement, in relative clauses. Remember that uh, the relative pronoun is substituting for a noun, which could be singular or plural before the substitution. The verb in the relative clause must agree with the original noun. En esta parte, verdad, recordamos que el relative pronoun está sustituyendo al nombre. Los relative pronouns son los que tenemos en la eh, en el cuadro en la primera parte del tema eh, que puede ser singular o plural y que va a suceder antes de la sustitución el verbo en una cláusula relativa puede estar con, puede estar de acuerdo con el nombre original and we have some examples for this people are looking People win the lottery. This is la primera oración. And then we can say, but I will do it like this one. And we change and it says, people who win the lottery are lucky. In this case, we're using a plural verb. And if we want to say or make a um, singular, we can say a person is lucky. She wins the lottery every year. We can change and we can say a person who wins the lottery every year is lucky. So you can see the difference between the two sentences because in the first one, people are lucky, people win the lottery. It's not like the best option. It sounds kind of weird. 
But in the second one, it's kind of fancy, different, uh, concise, and all of the things. And it says, people who win the lottery are lucky. No tiene tantos elementos y es como, suena un poco más natural la segunda que la primera, porque en la primera las personas tienen suerte. Cortamos la idea y decimos, las personas ganan la lotería. Pero no hay como una verdadera conexión entre esas partes. Pero en el segundo ejemplo, la per las personas que ganan la lotería son personas con suerte o tienen suerte. Y nos está brindando todos los elementos que necesitaríamos sobre la oración sin agregar demasiadas cosas que pues, eh, no pueden llegar a confundir. Luego, en la parte del singular, a person is lucky. She wins the lottery every year. We can use it, uh, this kind of sentence like separate one. They have no connection between the ideas. Podemos utilizarlas como dos oraciones separadas sin ningún problema. No hay una verdadera conexión entre ellas, pero en la segunda sí, porque nos agrega todos los elementos de una mejor manera. A person who wins the lottery every year is lucky. Una persona que gana la lotería todos los años tiene suerte. Y no necesitamos separar nuestras ideas. So, in that case, we end the part of the relative clauses. And I think we have another topic related to that. But we have just uh, information related to this um, to this topic, so it is not going to be like very hard to understand when we see the other topic related to the clauses. Así que vamos a terminar esta parte de las uh, relative clauses here, and now we are going to see a uh, vocabulary. But let's see. I have an image for you. That is, I think. No, no, it's this one, this is the phrase, but I have this one. That is the topic. Vocabulary for describing feelings and gestures. That is the topic that we are going to develop right now, but I'm going to take this one to this part. And we have here the image, but it's not, doesn't want to show. Okay. Uh, no, it is not like that. Give me a moment to move this one to the top of this document. Here. Here we are. We are going to talk about feelings. We are going to use a vocabulary that is talking about emotions and feelings. Uh, remember that we were uh, using the adjectives, uh, synonyms, in which we have a lot of words uh, that we can use for one uh, emotion. So in this case, we are going to see um, the words that we can use for uh, talking about the emotion that we have. Hey, what are the meanings for the emotions or the vocabulary related to feelings? And also, we are going to have some exercises related to that topic. Vamos a ver vocabulario que se refiere a las emociones y a los sentimientos, así como ya lo hacíamos con eh, los adjetivos que tenían que ver con los sinónimos, ¿verdad? Que hablaba de las emociones, cómo podíamos decir que estábamos felices en diferentes eh, palabras. Ahora vamos a hablar de los sentimientos, de las emociones, palabras que tengan que ver con eso. Luego vamos a tener dos ejercicios que tienen que ver con el tema de las emociones. Y después vamos a ver el vocabulario que tiene que ver con los gestos o las posiciones. So, let's see. You can see the, the image and you can read the words that we have here in the image we have let me make it a little bit short or small because it's kind of long 
And I want to show the whole image here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And I think it's kind of hard. So you have here some, um, some words related to the emotion. We have, for example, afraid, amused, angry, annoyed, appalled, astonished, we, bored, brooding, combative, quarrelsome, composed, confused, curious, contented, delighted, miserable, or depressed, determined, disappointed, disgust, exhausted, exhilarate. Gratitude, grateful, happy. We have hate, hysterical, hopeful, indignant, loathing, modest, sad, satisfied, serene, shy, bashful, sneaky, silly, surprised, whippy, withdraw, wonder. I I will send this image. Give me a moment. I will send this image to the group because I think it's kind of interesting to have this image on the group. So I will send it to the group of WhatsApp right now because you can see the images, uh, the draws that we have in the image and the names of the feelings that they are uh, demonstrating. So give me a second. Okay. I agree. Okay, I will send the image right now. Give me a moment. Who doesn't want to show? Okay, I will do it like this. Because it's kind of hard. I want to show you the emotions, but the emotion doesn't want to show it to you. So here we have. In a moment. Okay. Okay and okay. So there you have the emotions on the group. So it's kind of hard to say. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to share again the screen. So we are going to see the list of emotion that we have here in this moment. So it says that emotion vocabulary words can be really important in describing how we feel and how others are feeling. Most of us are now the emotional state, happy and sad. But what about determined and respectful? A fruitful, um, we are going to have like a list of words that we can use. So in that case, it's very important that we can use this kind of vocabulary to talk about the feelings, the things that, the things that we are feeling in a, a specific moment or uh, use this kind of word to describe the uh, things other people are feeling. So, we are going to write this one.
So in this case, it's saying that uh, that we know a lot of words related to feelings, but in, in some cases we uh, have just the general words that we use that are the most common, like happy, sad, angry, um, scared, afraid, and all of those things. So in this case, we are going to use another word that we can use to talk about the feelings. Así que vamos a ver algunas otras palabras que podemos utilizar en el tema de los sentimientos o de describir cómo nos sentimos que no sea eh, básicamente las mismas, ¿verdad? Que nosotros ya conocemos, sino que puedan expandir nuestro vocabulario. So we are going to see some eh, feelings and then I will send to you um, it's a crossword eh, in which you are going to read the uh, sentences and you are going to find what is the emotion that we are talking about. But in that case, I will send to you to work um, on that page uh, tomorrow, maybe. Le voy a mandar el crossword um, donde hay imágenes y eh, frases que tienen que ver con las emociones. Eh, es un crucigrama, ustedes van a ir escribiendo los sentimientos a los que se refiere eh, la frase y el dibujo que también les va a ayudar mucho a descubrir cuál es la emoción de la que se trata ese crossword. Pero se los voy a mandar después de la sesión para que lo trabajen mañana en then tomorrow we are going to say the findings, the words that we find uh, on the crossword, because we need to, to know what are the, um, the things that we are uh, writing. So we're going to see uh, the list of words and I'm going to write the noun and then the description. So we have first, the first word is afraid. And it says that feeling fear or being worried about something. Afraid. Then we have amused. And this means to feel entertained so that you love or a smile at something. Then we have angry. That means to feel dislike because of something or someone. To feel annoyed. The next one is annoyed. And this one means to feel slightly angry. Or is it statement at someone? In this case, we have angry and we have annoyed. Angry is when we are feeling a, a strong feeling. Cuando estamos enojados es un sentimiento fuerte. Estamos molestos. Eh, nos sentimos disgustados. Algo no nos gusta. O eh, estamos enojados con algo. 
but annoyed is to start molesto. It says to feel slightly angry. Es, no estamos enojados, sino que estamos un poco molestos o irritados. In that case, angry is a strong feeling, and annoyed is, it's kind of, it's a lively feeling. So, it's related, but it is not the same. Then we have another one that is a call. And it says, a feeling a great shock. It's going to say that it is not necessary to, ah, double P. I mean, feeling a great shock or disgust. At something or someone. It's like disgusting. Then we have astonished. That it means feeling a great surprise. We feelings of great respect and a little fear because you really respect someone. In this case, it's when you are feeling like it's not fear or the authority. In this case, it's like you feel a respect for that person, and you can say also admiration for that person. In this case, we can have like a, a good example of this is um, when you are talking about a religion and you are talking about God. In that case, if you feel great respect for the image of God, and in that case, you are not like, um, you don't have a fear, you just respect uh, the image of God. So in that case, is that kind of feeling. It's kind of of the same. Then we have born. And it says a tire and annoyed because you are uninterested in something. Then we have brooding. That means very serious, sad, and threatening. This is kind of a dangerous. Then we have combative. Or wholesome. And it means wanting to have an argument or a fight with someone. Then we have compose. And, and it says that it's calm and heavy. Can you repeat the pronunciation, the, the word uh, after the flash? 
quarrelsome. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Quarrelsome. Quarrelsome. Calm and having one's feeling under control. In that case, is when you're feeling in peace. Then you have confused, confused, confused. Not able to think clearly or understand. Not able to think clearly or understand. Then we have consensus. But in this case, we have like three different ways in which you can write these words. We have contented, content, or contentment. You have different points to write these words. And it means feeling happiness or satisfaction. Curious. Curious. Or we can use Curious or curiosity. And it means wanting to know about something. or someone. We are just going to write this last word about feelings because it's time to end the session and I'm going to send to you the image of the crossword. So we're going to write the last one that is delighted. in which we have two ways to write this one. Delighted or delight, and it means very pleased, very pleased or happy. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, a nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. Uh, we have a kind of uh, words that we are going to add to the list, but we are going to do it tomorrow. And, and now we are going to end the session. So we are going to see each other tomorrow, and I'm going to send to you the image of the crossword. And uh, tomorrow we are going to see the answers. So have a really good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Thank you. Thank good you. night. Thank you. Good night. Thank good night. You. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night.